All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you Joe Dispenza's seven ways to destroy negativity in your life. You know, if you're a follower of Joe Dispenza, you know he talks about this a lot, but a lot of times it's easy to get caught up in his explanations about how the mind works and coming away knowing a lot of information, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to actually apply that information to actionable steps that you can do today to do whatever you're trying to do. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to give you seven actionable steps you can do anytime you want to remove the negativity from your life. Now, if you're the kind of person who blames other people or other circumstances for everything that happens in your life and for your negative attitudes, then this video is not going to be for you. You're not going to enjoy this video. But if you're willing to take responsibility and create a better life for yourself, then this is going to be exactly what you need to create those positive outcomes in your life. Okay, now the first way that you can get rid of negativity in your life is to recognize your responsibility in creating it, right? I mean, there's always external stimulus. Maybe your coworkers are pain, maybe your boss is a jerk, maybe the weather sucks, maybe your car keeps breaking down. Whatever it is, there's always external stimulus. There's always things that you can use as an excuse to be negative, but your reaction to those stimulus is always your choice. Right, so if you can recognize that, and you can recognize that things will always go wrong in your life. No matter how great your life is, there will always be things to go wrong, but you have the choice about how you react to it. And I say this because most of the stuff that you hear about removing negativity in your life has to do with changing your external environment from getting rid of those negative stimuli. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I encourage it. You know, I've talked about in this video, if you can improve your environment, then absolutely you should. But recognize that your reactions have a big part in it and you have the power to control your thoughts and your emotions. So it may be that you can quit your job or you can move to a better place and get, get rid of the crappy weather or you can drop your commute or whatever it is that pisses you off, uh, you can get rid of it maybe. But ask yourself, honestly, if you get rid of that negative stimulus, will you just find something else to replace it? Because you can live in the most idyllic paradise in the world. I mean, I teach you how to live in paradise in my Digital Nomad University course, which you can check out in the description. But before you go take that course, recognize that maybe the bigger part of the problem is inside you, that you are taking every opportunity to be pissed off or to be resentful or to be jealous because of the stimuli around you. And if you go live on the most beautiful place on earth, well, you're still going to find excuses to have those same feelings. Like Dr. Joe says, you get addicted to those negative feelings. Those negative emotions create chemical hormone reactions in your body and you can actually get addicted to those hormones so that your, your mind and your body will keep on bringing up those negative emotions regardless of your circumstances. So you can get rid of your crappy boss and get rid of your crappy commute, uh, get rid of your crappy weather, all this stuff that's, that's bothering you and then you'll just find something else to bother you. So stop blaming everything outside of you for the negativity in your life and take responsibility for what you can ultimately control because those negative stimulus you're always gonna have. You can control them to some extent sometimes, but you can always control your reaction to them. So as soon as you recognize that you have that complete control to remove that negativity in your life regardless of what the external environment is, then you are head and shoulders above almost everybody else. Okay, now the second way is to stop thinking negative thoughts. And you know, this is what I talk about when I talk about practicing mental discipline. You have control about what you think about. You have control about what you dwell on. I mean, maybe some things come up for a second, but you have the choice when you have a, a thought come up, you decide whether you want to dwell on that or you want to just let it pass, right? And if you meditate regularly, you get good at this. You recognize that just because a thought comes up doesn't mean that you have to focus on it. You don't have to dwell on it. You can just let it pass. So if you have a negative thought, well, you can recognize it as a negative thought and not give it any more energy. You just let it pass. Because if you focus on negative thoughts, well, one, it's a big waste of time. Two, it's a waste of mental energy. And three, you are creating an addiction to those negative thoughts, which leads to the negative thought hormones coursing throughout your body that cause pain, that cause disease, and cause you to lose out on the things that you could have in life. So whenever you catch yourself sitting in traffic saying, man, this traffic sucks, woe is me, my life is horrible, recognize that those thoughts are not serving you and stop. Focus on something better. Okay, now the third way is to force yourself to replace negative emotions with elevated emotions. 
And this is related to the last one because your thoughts create your emotions and then your emotions dictate your thoughts. So it's kind of this vicious cycle or virtuous cycle as the case may be. So if you're angry, if you're jealous, if you're feeling guilty, if you're feeling resentful, whatever negative emotion, you can recognize that you're feeling that and then that emotion will try to bring on thoughts that match that emotion. So if you're feeling jealous, for example, you're going to think about the people that are so much luckier than you despite being terrible people or whatever. You tell yourself to justify that emotion. It's going to be this constant circle, but if you recognize that you're feeling this bad emotion, say, okay, I want to stop feeling jealousy or I want to stop feeling resentment or whatever it is, and I want to feel an elevated emotion instead. So maybe I want to feel love or I want to feel gratitude then you can switch to a thought that makes you feel that positive emotion. One of the easiest ways to do that is to feel gratitude. And the way you do that is to start thinking about all the things in your life that are going right. And no matter how terrible your life may be, objectively speaking, there's always something you can find to be grateful for. And chances are your life really isn't that terrible. Chances are, if you're listening to this video uh, on a phone or on a computer that's connected to the internet, probably in some air-conditioned room, then your life really is not that bad. But whether it is or not, you can always find things to be grateful for. So force yourself to start recognizing those. Be grateful for your phone, for your internet connection. Be grateful that you have food to eat. Be grateful that you have a warm bed to sleep in. There are a million things at any given time that you can find to be grateful for. If you will just force yourself to recognize those things, you can turn that negative emotion into an elevated emotion. Now the fourth way is to shift your focus from the past to the future. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate if you take just a second to hit the thumbs up icon because it makes the YouTube algorithm rank me better. And if you're enjoying this video, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future content like this. And if you want more videos just like this in the future, leave me a comment. Tell me you appreciate it. Tell me you want more like it. Or if you don't like it, tell me that you don't like it. You know, I want to hear your opinion. I won't hold that against you. Anyway, so where you put your focus is where you put your energy, and you can put your energy into the past, which you can't change, or you can put it into the future, which you are responsible for shaping, right? And if you put your energy into the past, well, the future is still going to happen, but probably the future is going to look a lot like the past. No matter where you are in your life, your future can be a lot better than your past, because who you are shapes your outcomes in life, and you have the opportunity at any point in your life to be a better person than you were in the past, right? We're always evolving, we're always getting better, unless we actively choose not to. So if you focus on a future that is desirable to you, and instead of the bad things in the past, and you know, the more you replay those, those traumatic incidents, if you're parents abused you or, or your first girlfriend broke up with you cruelly or the, the people at school made fun of you, whatever it is. If you focus on those negative events, you are recreating them. You're recreating the emotions that go with them in your mind and you're creating an addiction to those negative emotions. So stop focusing on those bad things that happened to you in the past and start focusing on the future that you desire. Because where you focus, that's where you put your energy. Now the fifth way to get rid of negativity is to replace your survival focus with an abundance focus. We are evolutionarily wired to focus on the negative because where we come from in the olden days, uh, there is a lot. Of, there are a lot of threats. We lived in a much more hostile world than we do now. So our, our brains and our bodies are still kind of wired for that much more hostile world where you have to worry about things going wrong. You have to worry about real things like snakes and crocodiles and saber-toothed tigers and warring tribes and that kind of thing. So your life is constantly in danger in that primitive situation. But in a modern environment, we just don't live like that anymore, right? Our life is not in danger. The, the worst that could happen to us usually is not very bad. I mean, we, we treat anything bad as though it's life or death situation. If your boss yells at you at work, it's, it's not a catastrophe, right? Your, your life is not at risk. So that focus on survival, which is really a focus on the bad things that could happen in order to avoid them happening, just doesn't really make sense anymore. I mean, we still have to focus on protection a little bit. I'm not saying that you should like leave your house without locking the door, but if we can shift our focus from the bad things that could happen to the good things that could happen, well, we're much more likely to make those good things actually. So you have to replace that focus on survival with focus on abundance because again, where you put your focus is where you put your energy. And if you want that abundance in your future, then you have to put your focus, your energy into that abundance.
Okay, so now the next way is to recognize the synchronicities in your life and the good things that are happening to you. And if you don't know what I mean by synchronicity, it's, it's a kind of strange occurrence. I think that the term came from Carl Jung initially that in certain situations, these strange coincidences seem to occur. Like when you're, you're following your life's path, you have these strange coincidences. And I'll give you an example because it's kind of hard to explain. But I was learning about synchronicities. I, was, I watched a few videos about it. And then uh, the next day, in the morning, my girlfriend told me she had a dream. And in the dream, there was some tall blonde man that she didn't recognize. And I, I said, he's probably Dutch because you know the Dutch are tall and blonde. Pretty clever of me, I know. Uh, and then, well, anyway, the. The, I don't remember if it was that day or the next day, but I was in Brazil. Uh, I was in Rio, kind of on the outskirts, in a place where there really aren't many tourists, so I almost never see anybody that's not Brazilian. But anyway, I heard a guy speaking English, and I was intrigued, so I went and, and talked to the guy, and it turned out that the guy was Dutch. The guy was tall, blonde, and Dutch. So I thought, okay, well, that's, that's a pretty nice coincidence for this time that I'm learning about synchronicities that are these interesting coincidences that, that come up when you start to look for them and when you're actually on your path, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in life. And so I talked to the guy a little bit. He said that he's from a city called Utrecht, which is a small town just outside of Amsterdam, which I've actually been to before. Absolutely beautiful place. If you ever get the chance to visit, I highly recommend it. Anyway, so he was from Utrecht. And then I went home. I was outside because I was running along the beach and then uh, I went home and powered up my computer to start working and you know how Windows 10 has those random images of places around the world that they just kind of cycle randomly and usually I never recognize well this one I thought oh that looks like the Netherlands wouldn't that be a crazy coincidence? So I clicked on the little thing that tells you where the picture was taken, and sure enough it was the Netherlands. And not only was it the Netherlands, it was Utrecht. So that was a series of extremely unlikely coincidences all kind of piled on top of each other. So that, in my mind, is the, the most powerful ex example that I've experienced of a synchronicity. So, so when you understand that concept, you can kind of start to look out for those in your life. And every time you see it, you can look up and say, thank you, God, for that sign that I'm doing the right thing. And then also you should recognize the things that are going right. So if you have some grand goal, you have something that you're trying to achieve, there's a million little steps along the way to that thing. And most people think, oh, I'll be happy or I'll be grateful once I achieve this grand goal. Uh, but until then, they can't be happy, right? But if instead of doing that, you can recognize every tiny little success along the way, then you can be putting yourself into that ideal future now and speeding your results immensely. So for example, I get an email notification every time I get a new YouTube subscriber, and every time I see that, I say, thank you God, it's working. And you can always do that, because whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to undertake, progress is always gonna be slow at the beginning. That's just how it works. Progress is always slow until you can build up enough momentum that you start moving quickly. But during that slow period, you still have to be grateful and recognize all those wins because that's what will keep you motivated and that's what will push you forward to the point where you're getting that exponential growth. So start training yourself to notice those good things that are happening to you and you'll start cultivating this mentality where you're more cognizant of the good things than of the bad things because there's always going to be both there's always going to be good and bad in your life and if you can focus more on the good things then you can push yourself towards more of them okay now the seventh and final way to get rid of the negativity in your life is to live in your ideal future instead of just wishing for it most people think about what they want in life and say oh wouldn't it be nice but they don't let themselves experience it. They're always separate from it. And if you say, this is what I want, like this is what I want in the future, you're separating yourself from it. You're saying, this is not me. I mean, the word want, just the word want, uh, it has a second meaning and to want means to lack. As in, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So if you want to have abundance rather than lack, then imagine yourself in that ideal future. And this is something that Dr. Joe does in his meditations, which if you have the opportunity to take some, I highly recommend. You can, through visualization, live those experiences that you desire in your future now, such that your body is already experiencing them. And because your body is already experiencing them, it's experiencing the emotions that go along with it. And those emotions are creating the chemicals which literally change your body to become the kind of person 
who has those experiences in real life. So by living this emotion that is in your future, you are bringing it closer to you in the now. So if you want to get rid of the negativity in your life, start practicing those seven things now. And if you want to learn more about this, I recommend you check out this video where I tell you some of the most powerful secrets in Dr. Joe's book, Becoming Supernatural. Also, of course, if you think this video might be beneficial to somebody else, please share it and don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment if you appreciate it.